Hello and welcome back to day two of APTA CSM here in Washington, D.C. My name is Kyle Stapleton, your Director of Communications of the APTA Student Assembly Board of Directors. And here we're joined with Michael Wong and Marshall Lemoyne. They're both the founders of PhysioU. So Michael and Marshall, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having hey, us. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to have you on. So can you guys tell us just a little bit about um, what PhysioU is? Yeah, you know, PhysioU is a professor's dream of how we can change the way clinicians and students learn and how we can implement uh, clinical practice guidelines and research, how we can change the way clinicians and students look at movement. We figured that the way that we used to use words and pictures could so much be better done in mobile apps and on digital devices where you can watch videos of movement and, and see how things are connected, research for examination, for treatment, so it's, it's really been a dream of mine to be able to uh, go beyond the boundaries of where I felt very stuck as a, as a textbook writer. I had a little pocket orthopedic guide. And over and over again, it, it just could, I always felt stuck with uh, the way that I could deliver information. So it's been my dream to build these mobile apps because the future, the students, the clinicians all have their devices. We should be able to push valuable information all the time and update it infinitely for the clinician and student. Yeah, and yeah. if I tackle it from a clinician's viewpoint, I'm in the clinic three times a week and for me, if I think of PhysioU, it's, it's pretty much, it's efficiency, right? Our students come in or the new clinicians come in and it's a great way for them to be able to take uh, just those key patterns, quickly review ahead of time for that patient, go in and just say, hey, you know what, these are the things I have to do. That gives me more time to treat. And patients always want more time to treat, so it helps kind of organize things for efficiency, I feel like. So, yeah, so tell us like a little bit about the backstory behind this. How did this all come about? You know, as a young, I just graduated from fellowship. I had gone into teaching, and I thought, I'm going to show them everything I know. I'm going to teach them to be great clinicians. But what you begin to realize is it's not just the delivery of information, it's how things are laid out, how the students and clinicians can begin to see the big picture and how things are connected. And so my first textbook was in hopes of connecting clinical patterns to special tests, but eventually I found that, you know what, I'm always stuck in the shoulder chapter when I really need to talk about the cervical spine and the thorax. And so I sat down one day in the cafeteria with a napkin on the table and started drawing out what would an app <laughs> look like? Right. I mean, these were kind of the early days, the first generation iPads. First generation. And I, b because the digital media does not depend on sequential pages, I can take you to the cervical spine, even if we're thinking about shoulder impingement, because I have a button that can lead mm -hmm. you there. And now, page count didn't matter. I could have infinite amounts of information organized any way that I thought was fit for developing clinical reasoning. So it really started on a napkin with a professor who said, I think we can do this better. We can help students become experts faster. And ever since then, it's been a joy ride. We've just been having fun creating new things. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like after, after graduating, and Mike was actually my professor in orthopedics, and I remember at that time, we didn't have smartphones, right? The Blackberry ball had just come out my last year. But then wow. from all these Con Ed classes, everybody has their phones out. Everybody has their iPads out. Um, and so I went on, I did a residency, and I did a fellowship in movement science. And again, I'm filming everything so I can go back and try to watch it. And I forgot to label what it's called. So I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore sometimes. Um, so I was like, well, how do we, how do we take that and like, offer it to the world? Right? How do I be able to say, um, you can't learn movement in a picture, or you need to be able to see movement. How many patients have students seen? Not that many. Right. So right. how do we try to organize in a way, bring it to life, to be able to say, hey, you shouldn't have to do a residency and a fellowship right. to learn all this stuff. How do we make the entry-level clinician better coming out? And it really is organized very well on the app. You know, everything's you. organized, you know, alphabetical order, you know, in regard, even in regards to body region. So it's really accessible for viewers to, you know, go to what part of the body they're trying to target, you know, which is awesome. It's, it's, it's funny you say that. When, uh, when we'd get together, we'd work, we had all these spreadsheets split out, like what videos we have to film and these big trees. We had a big saying above the computer, hey, the genius is in the simplicity of it. So I was like, how do we try to organize this? Because there's so many mm -hmm. special tests. And so to that day, it's still on my laptop. Whenever we're trying to like add stuff and try to organize, it's like simplicity, right? Simplicity. So it's, so thank you for saying that. Absolutely. You know, and what, what inspired both of you to, to just go after the idea of, of developing an app, creating an app, trying to be entrepreneurs? What, what, you know, what inspired you? You know, I think the successful entrepreneur will face failure. 
but your passion and your focus on the task that you're trying to achieve, the good that you're trying to do in the world, the impact you're trying to make on your own students, right? For a faculty member, there's beyond God and family, there's no more person more important than their student. And so nothing would stop me, whether it had anything to do with money or or lack of engineering or programming, I would find anything that it took to be, create our first low back pain app. So we tackled the hardest region. We said, if we can build an app, I told Marshall, if we could build an app for low back pain that does justice to movement, to pain science, to the clinical practice guidelines, and yet organize it in a simple enough way that our students could actually become clinicians, then we're going to keep going forward and build the rest. So it took two years to build low back pain. And once we were done, we realized there's something special here. Absolutely. So I think it's part of it is you have to have enough passion and enough good people who believe in the idea to support you because every leader has his weakness. If you saw my desktop, you would understand that I have <laughs> 3,000 ideas, 3,000 apps and, and things that I'm ready to build. Right. But Marshall would say, hey, I think we should finish this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's novel. Sure, let's do that. And so you have to have the right team. You have to have the right vision and the perseverance. You know, every time we release an app, the students learned better. Then there was no reason for us to stop. Mm -hmm. Did it make any money? It didn't make any money, but it brought in enough that we could make another. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the beginning is like that. Right. But the passion and the joy of building carries you through. Carries you through. Absolutely. And just to piggyback on that, I may be more of the, the structured organized, but you need someone that has big dreams and is willing to follow them through. So Mike is the one that started all this and was like, you know what, there, there's, a, there's a need, and he, he has an idea to try to fix that need, and so by any means, I'll jump on board and help him out as much as I can. Absolutely. And I know a lot of students are out there thinking this, that you know, they really want advice from, from entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, uh, about how to you know, just go, about, go you know, chase after something that they want to do. So what advice would you have for, for students who are, who are looking to become entrepreneurs? I think it's really important when you're trying to solve a problem in the world, there are many components. One is a financial component. So some things that you create may cost very little. Apps are different. Digital videos are very different. So uh, in that respect, being able to secure a funding source that will take you through to your first viable product is, is critical. Because you, you can't learn, you, basically you learn a lot from your first piece, the, mm -hmm. the first completion. Exactly. And so you need to follow through something that you start. And being able to follow through means that you have to have seen the problem and decided that there is no better solution than the one you believe you can create. So you have to have a little belief. It's a fine mix of crazy, a fine mix of, 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 of vision and focus, and then being connected to great people who can help you along the way. The, the little things that you can't do well, they pick up and push you, push you through that barrier. Mm. So I would encourage any entrepreneur out there, any young physical therapist, physical therapist student, you were put here to make a change in patients' lives and make a change in, in this profession. And the energy that you have and the vision that you have is, is special. And you will never know the joy of taking that to its fruition without taking a step out into the cold, looking for a few friends to do it with, and weathering the storm because there is sun on the other side of the clouds. And that's the beginning. You have to take a stab. You have to go forward. So that's what I would say as a word of encouragement to any entrepreneur. We did not go to business school. We went to PT school. <laughs> so learning to have mentors in that specific field. So talking to other people that were good business people and have a good business mind. Um, that was probably a big part for me being like, hey, I can't do it all. And I don't want to pretend I can do it all because I'm not good at some of these things. Um, so being able to have people you can trust and go to for advice. So just like if you're a student going into the clinic, you have a CI, you're going to ask about diagnoses and impairment treatments. Same thing in the business world, having someone you can go and talk to. So that'd be one piece of advice. The other piece of advice I'd say is just trying as best as you can to be an expert in that field. If you're going to try to create a product, try to promote a product, build a product, you want to make sure you're well versed in that. So you have to kind of do your background, do your due diligence and say, let me learn this really well so I can, so I can stand on two feet when I am presenting this. Absolutely. And the students just have to go after it, right? You have oh, totally. to go after it. Awesome. You learn when you fail.
Learn, yeah. you learn, learn when you fail. fail. Exactly. Only so you can stand back up and do it again, right? Exactly. Right. Absolutely. Michael and Marshall, thank you so much for coming on with okay. us. It's a pleasure. Oh. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, awesome. So we'll be we'll be right back with more interviews being conducted at APTA, APTA, CSM in Washington, DC.